Welcome back. It's December 14th, and we're carrying on with our Jesse Tree Advent devotions, preparing to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Our Jesse Tree picture for today was drawn for us by Shelby. Thank you, Shelby, for drawing this for us. And it is a picture of the temple, the temple in Jerusalem. And look at how big it is. Couldn't even fit it all in one in one camera shot here. Shelby did a great job capturing the fact that the temple in Jerusalem was really huge. This really big, impressive building built there in Jerusalem, which during the Old Testament time was the place of God's dwelling on earth, the place where his people could come before him and pray uh, and offer sacrifices and do all those kinds of things. So Shel thank you, Shelby, for drawing that picture for us. Our picture for today is of the temple because we're carrying on kind of where we left off yesterday. Yesterday we were talking about David and we heard God make a promise to David that one of David, an offspring from David, one of his sons would become king and would build a house for God. And that offspring, that son was Solomon. Was one of David's sons and the one who followed him as king over Israel. Now, the, the devotion book has you reading 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 to 28, and I encourage you to do that. That's where you'll find Solomon praying and asking God for wisdom. And God gives him that wisdom, plus a lot of other stuff too. God is very generous uh, towards Solomon. Uh, but what we're going to read here is from 1 Kings chapter 8, and we're going to read uh, this little bit of a prayer that Solomon prayed uh, when the temple had been built. They finished building the structure, and then they had to dedicate it, and Solomon prayed. And we're going to read just a little snippet of his prayer here uh, and see what it has to say. So, let's read here. Solomon prays and says to God, but will God indeed dwell on earth? That's an important question. We're going to want to come back to that here in just a second, but let's read on for now. Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, God, how much less this house that I have built. Yet, have regard to the prayer of your servant and to his plea. O Lord my God, listening to the cry and to the prayer that your servant prays before you this day, that your eyes may be open night and day towards this house, the place of which you have said, My name shall be there, that you may listen to the prayer that your servant offers towards this place, and listen to the plea of your servant and of your people Israel, and when they pray to when they pray towards this place, and listen in heaven, your dwelling place, and when you hear, forgive. So Solomon prays, and he starts out asking this question. But will God indeed dwell on earth? And remember, Solomon's a wise guy. In a, good, in a good way, not in a bad way. Not a bad wise guy or something like that. He's a good wise guy. He's a wise man given wisdom by God. And so he, he, his question is a good one. Can God possibly dwell on earth? Heaven, in the highest heaven, is not big enough to contain God, to hold him in. How much less this building, no matter how big and impressive it actually is, can it really hold God? And the answer... On the first, on, at first then, would be no. Of course not. Can't hold God. You can't contain God in a building like that. So what does Solomon ask God to do? He asks God to pay attention to the temple, to listen to the cry of his people, to have his eyes open night and day, to be watchful towards it. And look at how many times he says, listen, 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 oh, and here, but almost listen, five times. Listen, 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 is what he asks him to do. And God most certainly does. God does listen. He listens to the prayers of his people and he answers them. It's a beautiful promise that he makes to us all the way throughout the Bible. He listens to our prayers and he hears them. But there's another way we got to think about this question. Will God indeed dwell on earth? Because the answer is actually yes. We read in Matthew Chapter 1, verse 23, that Jesus, when he is born, will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Will God 
indeed dwell on earth? Yes! He himself will be born of a virgin and born to live among us. And he is our temple. In John chapter 2, verse 19, Jesus talks with the, 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 the people about the temple. And he says, if you tear down this temple, I will build it up again in three days. And the people all thought, well, he, he's crazy. It took 46 years to build the temple, they say. Not even Solomon's temple. Solomon's temple had been destroyed already. It was on a new version already by then. They say it took 46 years to build this temple. How can he build it in three days? Well, of course, he's talking about the temple of his body, which when they destroy it, he will raise it again in three days. When they crucify him, he will rise again on the third day. And so Jesus is the dwelling place of God on earth. And Jesus is the reason we know that God is listening to our prayers. We don't pray, as Christians, we don't pray to God through a temple, through a building. We pray to God through his son, Jesus, our Lord, and we know that he hears and answers. And so that is the Savior whose birth we're getting ready to celebrate.